Hey guys, it's me, Kimberly. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, whether you're new or you've come back for more. If you are new, you should go ahead and click on the subscribe button down below. If you're not new, welcome back. I hope you guys are excited for this. Um, we're about to get into the next step of remodeling this basement. So, what we're doing is taking these wood panel walls that are boring and gross and disgusting and changing them. Um, first thing, if the sound is a little weird, I'm so sorry. I'm using a new mic, and I this is my testing video. <laughs> um, so this is what the wall looks like right now. We've got this white to the halfway point, and then it's dark wood the rest of the way. It's really textured um, and just overall very, very ugly. So we're going to change that and make it look like drywall. I don't want to rip the wall out because that would take a lot more work. We'd have to get insulation put in. If I was gonna, like if I was gonna have that ripped out and put in drywall, I would wanna do it all properly and have insulation put in because there's none in there and just like go all out. And I'd have to hire someone and pay a ton of money. You guys already know, I'm not into that. We did the fireplace DIY because I like to save money. This still cost me a little bit of money, but not that much. So what you're gonna need for this project a broom or possibly a feather duster type thing. I'm using a broom just because these are pretty textured and the grooves are pretty deep. So there's like spider webs in the grooves, grooves that I need to sweep out. So I've just got this little bitty broom that you guys saw in the fireplace video. And if you haven't seen the fireplace whitewashing video, it'll be linked up in the cards and probably also listed down below. Um, you will also need your bucket and your scrub that we used in the fireplace video. Something to sand with. Now I prefer these sanding block sponges for this project, but you could also use like a sander or a like just sandpaper or sandpaper block. These are like literally sponges and they came in a three pack, that's why I've got three here. They're sponges so you can get them wet, you can use them just dry, like they're great. You will also need let me move that some kind of putty knife. I have three. <laughs> Why do I have three? I'm not actually sure. This one is a putty knife, a small one. This one is actually made for this. It's a joint knife because we're using drywall joint compound. So this is actually made for this job. And this is actually a tape knife, but I have found that this one, because of its flexibility, um, it looks a lot less flexible than it is. When it's actually on the wall, it's a lot more flexible, and just something about it just makes it work really well with this. We have already done one wall, that's how I know this, um, and we're doing another wall today. Um, I did have, like, a wood piece of trim, I guess you would call it, going across the middle wall. I pulled those out and took the nails out of the wall. I did forget to film that. I also didn't take a before picture of this side of the room. I got a before picture of the other side of the room. You guys know, I'm just like the kind of person that always forgets that. I actually took before photos when we moved in and now I can't find them. So then the last thing you will need is this stuff. Um, you don't need this specific brand. This is Sheetrock Plus 3 Joint Compound. You just need a joint compound. There's different brands and different types, and you can figure out what works best for you. We picked this one just because of the benefits that it mentioned. Um, we just went to Home Depot and looked at the different ones and then picked what sounded like it would work the best for us. So this is a joint compound that's Sheetrock. Um, it says it was made for finishing up walls and stuff like that. So... That's what I'm using. And you'll probably also need a vacuum to clean up at the end, but I'm not going to show you guys that. I'm assuming you all have a vacuum, um, if you have carpet anyway. If you don't have carpet, you can just use your broom. So, let's get started. The first thing you need to do, clean off those walls. Before I get to scrubbing, I'm going to use the broom to get all of the dust and spiderwebs out of there. So you're going to sand down 
the wood. It doesn't need to be completely sanded, like you don't gotta get all the finish off of there, you don't gotta get all the paint off of there, or anything like that. Um, the stain, I noticed the stain on the bottom half of this does leak through the drywall, like it comes through, which can happen with stains. Um, if you use like paint and stuff, it can leak through that. So it does leak through both layers of drywall, and it also leaked through the first layer of primer, but after the second layer and the two layers of paint, it doesn't leak through anymore, so I'm not worried about getting it all off. If you are worried about getting it all off, then you should... What is the word? Um, then you should actually get some, like, remover. They sell stuff that'll actually remove all the stain, and you just gotta, like, brush it on. But I'm just worried about getting a nice surface on there, so it's just gonna be real quick sanding. Okay, so after that, you're going to take your bucket and your scrub, and you're going to scrub down the wall. I think it's the worst part. Um, depending on how dirty your walls are, you can just use water, since these walls haven't been touched really since I moved in. I'm going to use um, Fabuloso with water, so an all-purpose cleaner works fine. You could use a wood cleaner if you really wanted to, but you're just going to scrub them down real well. Okay, now that you've got the wall scrubbed, you've got to let it dry. You can put a fan on it or dry it somehow, but it needs to be 100% dry before we go in with the drywall. So for me, I'm just going to let it sit overnight because it is already like 11, 1130, and then I'll be back in the morning, which will be only like a second away for you guys when we will get in. I do want to make a note, this is not a one day project. This is not even a weekend project. This is about a week long project. If you have help, it's still going to be a week long. It's just going to be shorter days for you. Because this drywall, you have to put the first layer on and then let it dry completely. The instructions say 24 hours. It also says don't touch it if it's not dry yet. So, it actually takes 48 hours. Who would have guessed? Because who wants things done in a timely manner? But, for my walls, it takes about two layers some patches could even take a third layer depending on how deep these creases are because some of them are actually deeper than others on my wall for your wall if you don't have that deep of crease creases it's probably only going to be about two layers for you lucky you by the way so you got to put it on one day two days later you can do a second coat two days after that you can sand it down then after that you can start painting for me, I work and I'm in school, so I get about one or two days a week where I can actually work on this. And by one or two, I mean I've got an hour or two within those one or two days. So it's like a long process for me. I've got one half wall done. We're just now starting on this wall. Hopefully, I can get this drywall up tomorrow, get the second later on Saturday, and just get this wall done. So. Let your wall dry, and I'll be back in a second. So now that the wall is ready to go, basically, you're going to take your scraper spatula thing, and you can take it right on in here, and just pick some up with your, this is called joint knife. They do sell little tins that you can use, um, like you put some of this into a tin and then it makes it a little easier. Y'all know I'm all about saving money and it's really not necessary because you really can just scoop right in there. And now we're going to get started on actually putting this on the wall. So you're just going to take you're just going to take your scraper full of product and literally just smush it into the creases. Now your little cracks between your woods might not be as deep as mine but mine are pretty wide and pretty deep, so I like to do this part before I do the rest of the wall. But you're just gonna do this and fill in any deep creases, any deep holes like this one. You can go ahead and fill that in now too.
and I am going over this a couple of times each way just because I want to make sure to really push that compound into the crack. It's got to go all the way in otherwise when it dries it'll sink in and I'll have to do another layer just on the cracks. Once you have all of the cracks filled in, this is when I like to go in and start filling in the main parts of the wall where there's like, I don't know if you guys can see this detail, but there's lots of little holes in this wood, and it's just the texture of the wood that they used. So I like to fill all that in now that I'm done with the major cracks. You don't need to get this the smoothest layering in the world, but you do want it relatively smooth. If there's any air bubbles, you really want to keep scraping to make sure you get those out. As it dries, those bubbles might pop. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Um, but if you have a lot of air bubbles and they pop, you're going to have little... Uh, like little craters in the wall once it dries. So you really want to smooth it out, get it at just the right angle to make sure you pop all those air bubbles and get it relatively smooth. It does sand down very easily, so it really doesn't need to be the most perfect thing, but close to smooth is what I recommend. Now after it's all on the wall, I like to just go through and give it one more layer of scraping just to make sure that it's even all throughout. If you're anything like me, it is gonna get all over your hands. Um, if you're like my wife, you probably won't get a speck on you. It washes off very easily with warm water, but it really dries out the skin, so if that's something that bothers you, you might want to wear some gloves. So this is what this piece of the wall looks like right now. Let's see if you can see. If I make it a little darker, you can kind of see the little texture that's on it. So you can kind of see the little rivets and strips going down the wall that aren't as smooth as the rest of it. These are totally fine. When it's dry, you can sand it down and smooth it out. So for now, this is perfectly fine. So that is obviously just a piece of my wall that I'm showing just for demonstrative purposes. So now it's time to do the rest of the wall and I'll check back in with you guys in a moment. Okay, so now that the wall has its final layer, did take me a lot longer because life got in the way and so it took me like two or three weeks before I finally finished this wall up. Um, but it's ready for sanding. This part is not necessary, like it's not required, but it will make the next step easier. So that's why I'm doing it. So I can't get this drywall on here super, super smooth. And for some reason on this half of the wall, it came out even rougher than it did on the first half of the wall. So if I smooth some of those ridges down and just make it a nice, you know, smooth canvas, then when I go in for the second layer, it'll be easier because um, some of these ridges, I'll show you guys a close up, but some of these ridges are like farther off the wall. And so when I run the scraper over it, it'll like catch on it and stuff like that. And so if I just sand those down, then it will make it a lot easier to get a smooth layer on the second layer. <laughs> and then it'll be a much smoother process, a much smoother wall at the end of the process. So let me go ahead and get you guys a close up. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. You can kind of see there. I'm gonna make it darker so you can see the shadows. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Let's zoom out a bit. So this space here, I've already centered down. You can kind of see it's smooth. You can see the wall peeking through here, where the layer was just a little thinner than it was over here. So it's just nice smooth here, but then over here you can see these ridges, and these are what the scraper will catch on when I'm trying to lay a smooth second layer. So all you have to do is take the sanding sponge that I told you you would need, and you're just going to sand those ridges down. And now it's relatively smooth. And you can use up and down motions to get ridges like that. 
And then, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's a ridge that's going down vertical right here. For those, it makes it easier to go side to side. And it's smooth. Like, obviously, there's still more sanding for me to do just along here. So I, t I tend to sand a little bit slower than just furiously rubbing against the wall just because if you go really fast, well, I find that a little harder, but also it's going to send clouds of this dust that you're sanding off into the air, which you can get a face mask and put that on and then you won't have to breathe that in, but it's still going to get all over everything in the room. So if you just go a little bit slower, the dust will just fall straight to the ground. It might come up in a cloud a little bit around the wall, but it's not going to spread throughout the entire room. And I have other furniture in this room, so I don't really want it spreading everywhere because then everything needs to be cleaned off. I'd have to take my computer out of here because I'd have to worry about dust getting inside of it and stuff like that. For me, it's just a lot more convenient to go slower. It takes more time, but it also just makes for a cleaner process that doesn't add extra work, so. Feel free to sand at your own speed, although slower is probably going to get it a little bit more detailed um, where you can actually focus in on certain spaces. So just feel free to go at your own speed. Now when you're sanding, you don't have to worry about getting it perfectly smooth because remember, we will be doing a second layer. If your wall doesn't need a second layer, that's up to you, but then you would need to sand it perfectly smooth. My wall does because these ridges are so deep that it sinks into the creases and then it needs a second layer to smooth it all out. So second layer may not be mandatory for you depending on how smooth your wall is to begin with, but since I am doing a second layer, the sanding um, doesn't need to be perfect. So the first thing you want to do before you put, put on the second layer is going to be to vacuum up all this dust so that when you do the second layer or the second coat you can get the nice even clean bottom as well because with all this dust it's piled up so thickly that I won't be able to get all the way to the bottom of the wall unless I clean it up first. So next up you are just going to do the second coat of drywall just the same exact way that you did the first coat. So next up is to sand down your second layer. I did a very thin second layer so it's already pretty smooth. I just need to sand out some of the ridges that I couldn't, couldn't really smooth over. Then we will move on to painting. So the next step is to vacuum up all the dust from the round, obviously, but now we're going to put on our primer. Um, you may have noticed from the clip that I did not vacuum up all the dust. That's because my vacuum su sucked up something I shouldn't have, and now it's acting funny and isn't really suctioning properly, so I'm going to have to take a look at it, but I'm just going to do that later. For now, we're going to get started on priming this wall so that maybe I can move down here this week. So, I am a pretty messy person, so I do have a drop cloth here that I will be laying now onto my carpet because I really don't want to ruin it. And I just, like, I'm not, like, so messy that it needs to be all the way across the room, so I just leave it folded in half and then just move it, like, down the wall as I need to go because it's not quite long enough. So I like to have everything that I need in one spot, 
So I have this table, let's see if you guys can see it. There we go. So I have this table set up right next to my wall. It has my primer, my paint, my paint sticks, pour spout thingy, my brush, um, paint can opener, and my paint trays. This one on top is an empty and clean one. Those are just disposable ones. So, yeah. Um, we're going to start with primer. You need to do two coats of primer before the drywall can actually be painted on. You cannot just put paint straight on this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get started with that. I'm assuming you guys know how to paint, but I'm going to go ahead and insert a clip if you want, just in case. Okay guys, so in case you couldn't guess, the next step is to go ahead and paint the wall. Now that we've got two coats of primer up, I get to finally paint. So, um, I didn't really show you guys, but the primer I used, this is just what I had in my house, and this is the Kills 2 Latex. It's a primer, sealer, stain blocker. Maybe that's why the stain doesn't leak through. Um, so maybe you should make sure to use a stain blocker primer. Because uh, if not, if your wood is stained, it might leak through your paint. So this is just the primer that I had in my garage from revamping an old dresser. For paint, I have the Interior Matte uh, Bare Premium Plus Ultra. It's also stain blocking. This is a paint and primer in one, but you do need to use a primer. Like Just because your paint has primer in it does not mean that you can get away without using a primer when you're using this kind of drywall stuff. It's not like a regular wall, so you have to use the primer to really seal it in place and make sure your paint sticks. Um, the shade that I am using on my walls is Opulent Opal. I don't know what she's doing up there. Uh, sorry about that banging. I'm pretty sure that is the sound of my wife cooking. So Opulent Opal, in store it was like a off-white with a purple tint to it, but on the wall it actually looks like a pink tint unless it's in the right light, like unless it's in sunlight, and then it looks purple, but um, mostly it just looks white because it's just an off-white. So that's what I wanted. I wanted something very light that was white without being white because I didn't want it to just be white walls everywhere because I do have a lot of like white furniture or white light marble like I didn't really want white walls on top of it so I went with something that's off-white and it looks super cute so I'm gonna go ahead and get to painting Okay guys, so after you get your two coats of paint up, you are done. You can paint the trim whatever color you would like, or you can leave it how it is. I actually have a uh, wood trim up here along the edges. You guys probably don't. That's not really normal in most houses. This main basement has it for some reason. I don't want to risk pulling it down. So um, I am painting the trim, but I'm just going to wait until I have all the wool and then paint all of the trim at once. So all I did was get some primer on there and didn't worry about if I got paint on it. But after you get your two coats of paint up, you are done. Like, just let it dry. This is already dry. Um, you know, maybe if you gotta clean up the edges. I still, I fixed my vacuum. Um, it was just hair. I didn't suck anything up. It was just the hair and it finally got to be too much. Um, so I've gotta vacuum up the rest of this dust. But after that, it's ready. It's done. I mean, you might not want to push stuff up, like furniture way up against it. Give it a little bit of time to like fully cure or whatever but it's totally fine you can hang stuff on it like pictures whatever it is you want to do it's up to you 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you with your remodeling project. I know I was really excited when I learned about this process because I hate the wood paneling in here. All I want is this regular, beautiful, smooth wall that just, you know, looks like a normal wall. It doesn't look dated. It's not ugly. And yeah, I was just pretty excited to learn about this process. I tried to look up videos on YouTube and there was only a couple um, and they were the rest were really low quality, you couldn't really see what was happening, so I hoped that I hope that I was able to help you. I hope I got some good footage so you can actually see what's going on and you can learn how to do this for yourself and not have to spend tons and tons of money paying someone else to change your walls up for you. Um, again, it's a very cheap process. The drywall is $14 at Home Depot, and that's because we got one of the better st styles, brands, I don't even know. There were some cheaper options. So it's very cheap. It took uh, not even one bucket to do this this wall all the way down. Um, and then it took another bucket to do the wall on the other side. So overall it's going to be about a bucket or two to... Mm, actually no, I did a lot thicker on that wall. I'd say it to do a like a small room, all four walls, with this kind of wood paneling, it's probably only going to take you two maybe three buckets. So, super affordable if you have other supplies already, which most people have cleaning stuff, things like that. So it's a super affordable way for you to change your walls. And I was just pretty excited, so I'm gonna stop repeating myself over and over. I, If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments down below or if there was another easier way to do this that I just don't know about. Maybe you have some tips for this kind of process. Leave them in the comments so everybody else that's watching this video can um, gain from your experience. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at shewhospeaks underscores instead of spaces. I'm also on Snapchat at Kimberly.Nicole with a K, not a C. Go ahead and click on my face to become an adventurer and join our little family. And if you want to watch another one of my videos right now, there will be two on the screen for you to choose from. Thanks for watching. Bye.